Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you an example of use MATLAB to measure manually a uh, grain size or any other feature in a uh, prepare uh, metallography or prepare sample uh, using metallographic uh, metallographic preparation. So as you notice here in this microstructure, which you know is basically a steel sample, has been metallographically prepared and edged. And you could see based in the analysis or in the process that was done, uh, the delineation of in this gray spray austenitic grain size, which is a, a interesting uh, feature that we should measure in steel uh, steel samples. So in this case, you'll see how the grain size is distributed in the microstructure, and we want to measure this grain size. In this case, we're going to do it manually using MALA. First, the sample obviously needs to be metallographically prepared and uh, must be done properly. So you need to be able to see properly the grains that you want to delineate. There are different methods to do that. I recommend to use the ASTM standard E2112, um, which is basically the standard to determine the average grain size. There is different methodologies to do it. So I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna use this standard for this tutorial. I'm just basically gonna show a um, manual way um, to use MATLAB to quantify, you know, the uh, distance or the or the that or the size of different features here. Uh, additionally, the, the the picture that you are using for this quantification must be properly scaled, so you should have a scale mark where you need to basically determine the size of this of this picture, this number of pixels, and also the the size. In this case, for example, this is the scale bar, and it corresponds to fifty microns. In this case, this bar. So we we need to scale the bar. Uh, we need to scale the picture accordingly using this bar. And finally, also, because this is a manual method, so it's not, you know, like the standard method by STM standard, you need to have a large sample. So I recommend to use, you know, many measurements, not just for one microstructure. If you have many microstructures, let's say you have five or 10 microstructures, you need to have uh, different measurements. I recommend more than 100 measurements to have a statistically significant. So you need to measure many features uh, many times in different microstructures, different locations. And also don't just focus in the large uh, features because it's possible that you just focus in the large large uh, features, for example, here in this case, big grains. So that's not going to be representative. You need to measure small grains like this one and also large grains to have a, a, a distribution there. So, you know, after measuring many of these grains, small, medium and big sizes, you can determine the statistical distribution. And after that, you can plot the histogram to see uh, if the data is distributed normally or log normal or in any other distribution. That's something that we can also explore later in this tutorial. So I'm going to jump to MATLAB and we are, I'm going to show you the code. So we are in the MATLAB um, software here, and that's my default configuration. So in the left side, you'll see the current folder where I have all of the codes that I need to use for this particular uh, application. And I also, I need to place here the picture that I want to scale or I want to measure. In this case, I have these two pictures. I'm going to use this one, which is, is the name is surf 2 dash 2 x gpj okay, JPA, JPJ, sorry, JPG. Uh, I also can use another uh, extensions like TIFF or PNG. And so you just need to name accordingly. Um, so basically, you need to uh, download the code, all of the different functions, and place all of them in the current folder in MATLAB. And also place the pictures that you want to scale or you want to uh, measure. So after that, the first thing is to uh, determine the uh, scale bar. So I have a, a application here or a program, which is called Find Pixels. So if I double click, it's going to open this one. And the only input here, you know, you don't need to change anything. The only input is the name of the picture or the figure in this case. So as you notice here is the, the this figure must be in apostrophe between apostrophes. And additionally, it needs to be here the extension of the figure, in this case, JPG. OK, so this needs to be the exact name. After that, we are going to run the code. So basically, the first thing that the, the, the code is going to do is open the figure in the MATLAB atmosphere, as you see, it's a scale here. And I'm going to focus in the scale mark. So first, uh, you notice there is a cursor there. I'm going to select a, a box where uh, I'm going to locate the uh, scale mark. So in this case, I'm going to select a first point here, and I'm going to click with the mouse. And it's going to give me the option to a second click. So I'm going to click here to just have this uh, zoom of this uh, scale mark. So. Uh, it's asking me if I'm okay with this input box. If I'm not okay, I can say no, and I can repeat the operation. For example, I can say here and here. And now you notice that it's delineated the, the square, and I can say, okay, yes, I'm, I'm happy with that. Now notice that uh, the picture just zoom in the particular scale mark. And now it gives me the uh, selection of two, uh, again, two points. I'm going to select the first point in the left side here of the scale mark. So first click, click, 
and it's going to give me a second cursor. So I'm going to go to the next, the other extreme, and I'm going to click there. Okay. Or similarly there, click. All right. So basically, I put that there, and notice that here in the workspace is telling me the pixels between that the in that figure is 152. So there's 152 pixels, and remember the scale the scale bar is 50 microns. So that's important. We need to know that. So the second part is opening the the main program, which is Draw Grains version three in this case. So uh, here the inputs that you need to place are in the first part. Again, you need to put the name of the picture, which basically is the same that we used before, obviously. And here we need to put the scale, which is the, the, the number that is in the figure, in this case, 50 micros. And here the number of pixels that we found, in this case, 152. So that's the number of pixels that we were found in based in the scale mark. So now we are set. The only thing that we need to know, do is run in this time with this code. So we are going to run. And first thing that is going to ask me if is this a new analysis? There is the option yes, no, and delete the last. Obviously, this is a new analysis because it's the first point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click yes. Basically, it's gonna open the figure, and here is the scale mark. I'm not gonna mess with the scale mark now. And notice that uh, the mouse is activated in this case. And the idea is to click uh, with the mouse and delineate one of the <clears throat> one of the grains that or the features that I can measure. So I'm gonna show <clears throat> here an example. So I'm gonna click in my mouse and notice that I started to draw manually a line. That I'm gonna do it manually, you know, considering obviously my my profile here, and I don't need to uh, close it completely. I just need to go close to the endpoint, and it's automatically closed with this polygon <coughs> figure. So basically, it's creating the first feature. And notice that in my workspace, a couple of things were created. The most important part is this table distribution, which is going to basically gonna if I double click. Put in the different um, features that I'm collecting here. I could collect more features, but I'm just collecting this one for now. <clears throat> in this case, it's the maximum diameter, the minimum diameter for this particular. So notice that it's not completely <clears throat> circular. So maximum diameter will be the maximum diameter here. Minimum diameter is the ferret diameter, which is this one. The, uh, the equivalent diameter is basically what if we make this one as a circle, <clears throat> a fully circle, so that's the, basically the equivalent diameter. Also quantifying perimeter area and circularity. Basically, circularity is a value that goes from zero to one. One is perfectly circle, and zero is in non-circular all. So in this case, it's 0 0.73 circularity because you notice that it's irregular. So that's okay. <clears throat> so that's my first point. That's the first draw that I did. So I'm gonna go again and go go to my code and go run again. Now, if I click yes, it's gonna delete what I did. I'm gonna restart again. So at this time, I'm gonna say no, and I'm gonna draw a second point. Now, notice that I can overlap. So I'm starting inside this grain. And I can go inside and I delete. I, I, I release the, the click of the mouse and notice that it basically delineates. And if I overlap the code, it allows to uh, subtract the overlapping and just basically uh, bordering the both features. This is basically because, you know, honestly, these are two physical grains in the microstructure. So one couldn't overlap the other one in this plane. So that's why this code is basically chopping one part and it's just, delete, you know, going to the border of that. So in this case, <clears throat> now I have, if you check the table, now I have two data points, the first one and second. Notice that the second, the, the, the equivalent diameter is, is, is smaller, obviously, here uh, graphically you could see. And also you can notice that, for example, this diameter is 49, the scale bar is 50, this. So notice that the 50 approximately is the equivalent diameter of this. So it makes sense. You know, it has some, <clears throat> you always need to check that if you know, the scale mark, uh, the numbers that you are measuring are... Uh, are, are similar to your scale mark. OK, now the next one is going to be drawing a couple of grains. So I'm going to just <clears throat> draw a couple of grains, and we'll, uh, we'll be back for a couple of things. <clears throat> So uh, I draw like uh, five grains here. You notice that the table, basically we have five features. <clears throat> let's say that uh, we are going to do a new grain now. So I'm going to draw a new one. And uh, let's say that is no, obviously. And let's say that I'm going to draw something and I'm going to do really something really here that did something wrong. So I started here, but I just get distracted and I did something pretty weird here, like a, you know, like a freestyle thing. So I'm not happy with this. I want to delete it. So that's what I created this other option if I run it. I create this delete last. So basically, if I click this one, it's basically going to delete the last feature. But it's just working for the last one. If I try to do it again, you know, it's not going to work. So it's invalid. Uh, because obviously it's just for deleting the last feature. So I'm going to continue drawing a couple of more uh, grains and I'll be back uh, to explain another uh, capabilities. Okay, so now we have uh, nine grains that we have drawn. Uh, let me just explain you another um, 
feature here. So let's say that uh, we are, you know, measuring a couple of details here. We want to give more detail. So I can also come here to the figure and click in the uh, zoom in. And I can also zoom in in my image. So you notice that there is obviously some pixel in there. But I can, if I got a good resolution image, I can go more deeper and see much clearer the details that I want to see. So there are some times you need to be careful because sometimes you go too deep and you start to see another features that are not grains. Uh, so you need to, you know, uh, kind of balance there. So what is exactly a grain, what is not, and balance that. So let's say that I'm going to uh, go with this particular magnification here. So I'm going to leave it in this case, okay, using this zoom uh, option. And I can also uh, move with my pan option here. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to click uh, run again. Going to continue with analysis saying no. And notice that, for example, I'm going to delineate this grain here that it seems that it goes around here. Obviously, I need to use my own judgment. And notice that they delineate that. So I can use the same magnification there just to create another grain. For example, let's say this one. Okay. And I can also do my pan to move it here. And now I can just run again. And for example, doing this one. <clears throat> And if I want to go to my home uh, view, I just restore the view here in this home and I'll go to the home again. So I can keep uh, measuring grain. So I'm going to do a couple more and I'll be back uh, to explain another feature. All right. Let's say that we are happy with that and we have 16 grains in this case. So we have our data there. Um, uh, some of the couple of things that um, you know, you need to be careful here is that obviously if you do a grain inside another grain, it's going to generate an error. So let's say, for example, if I get and run it, um, for some reason, I uh, just draw something inside a grain. So this one, for example, here, it's going to create an error there. So it's going to, you know, the, so the code is going to freak out and it's going to create a lot of uh, options here that are not useful. And basically, I just need to, okay, ignore that and keep going again. And I said analysis, uh, no, and... I can continue drawing here. Now, the downsides about this one is something that I didn't correct in the in the in this version is that if you notice the table, it left a, a a zero row. Basically, it left this one because uh, I created this mistake. I did this mistake, so it, it didn't measure anything. So it left it at zero. So I can leave it for now because I just track the number of lines here, so I don't need to modify too much. But at the end, if I want to plot this one properly, I need to delete this row just to avoid confusions with my code. So I'm gonna co uh, do a couple of more, and uh, will be uh, I'll be uh, back uh, in a minute. Okay, so I did, uh, as you notice here in this table, 100 measurements, and you can notice in the picture the different grains that I measure. Just just remember that try trade the small uh, grains, but also the big ones, just to have a good representation of or good population of or distribution of your data. Okay, so they are not perfect, but at least I you know try, you try to follow manually, and you could have your own judgment to see how good or how bad your drawings are. So after that, basically, I mean, you could do different things. For example, you can save this figure, save us and save it like a, the figure of MATLAB, but also you can uh, save it in different uh, configurations. I suggest to save it as a figure in MATLAB because you can edit it later. You can also go to the Proud browser, Proud browser, and you'll see all of the different grains that we created here, including the picture there. So I can filter the picture on and off. And I also can remove the independent grains, you know, but one by one that I did. Sometimes, you know, it could be useful for a copy in a presentation or things like that. So that's another possibility. And if I go to the MATLAB here uh, folder, I also, this is the most important part, the table distribution, but I usually save everything because actually if I save everything, I can keep going later when, you know, I can just get 100 points today and save everything and tomorrow continue and it will continue doing the drawings. Uh, so what I need to do is copy all of these. So I just select all of these uh, variables in the workspace, uh, right click and save as. So when save as, I save it here, for example, MATLAB in this folder. I'm going to just replace. And basically what it's doing is creating in the current folder this variable called MATLAB.mat and contains all of these different uh, variables that I just saved. So in case that I close MATLAB and I open again, I just double click this MATLAB uh, variable and these uh, variables in workspace are going to show up again. Okay, so they are going to be safe. So if you, remember, always close this one because if you don't, this is just in the RAM memory of MATLAB. If you close MATLAB, this is going to, 
be gone, you know? So you need to save it in the current folder here with the right click. All right, so let's do the last thing, which is gonna be basically check the table. So we have all of our table distribution. Remember that we did a couple of mistakes. Uh, for example, this one, I did a mistake here. So I'm just gonna right click and delete this row because I don't want to measure that zero. And these two here also were mistakes. So I'm gonna delete those zeros. So it's basically when I was trying to draw, there was something wrong and you know didn't pick any number. So that's why it's zero. And you know I didn't measure anything zero. So I'm just deleting manually. So there is no zeros anymore. That's something manual that I did. And now you have the different distribution here. So you can come with the different MATLAB tools and check the, let's say, for example, the equivalent diameter. So I can I can create a new figure, type in figure, and selecting this row and coming, for example, to apps, and uh, no, sorry, apps, no, uh, plot, and showing the histogram. So basically it's showing the histogram, it's histogram distribution of the particular data that I have, 97 points, okay? So this is the histogram. Notice that the y, the x-axis is the grain, and this is kind of the numbers, the counting number, okay? So that has a histogram. So I can also edit this if I want. So I can just come to editor, select the x-axis, and then this is gonna be the grain size. And this is in microns. Microns. And this is just the number of counts. Basically the number of counts that I did. Usually like to have my plots in Tiny Roman and big display, like 20, so you can see. And now you'll see basically the nice distribution. So you'll see there are a couple of grains that are big, but you know, most of the grains are small. So basically you could see here, if you trust a normal distribution, basically your average is gonna be approximately in 30, which is not realistic because evidently this is not a norm, uh, no, normal distribution. This is more like a log normal distribution. So this is, you know, you can need to, uh, if you check this uh, distribution, you can say here that probably the average is going to be around 20 for this particular measurement. Uh, obviously, if you measure more grains, if you have more microstructures from the same material and measure more numbers, you are going to get a more closer view of you know your distribution of grains of grain size. So I recommend to measure as much as you can. If you have five uh, micros, you measure as much grains as you can, big grains, small grains, and after that you'll have a good distribution of your data. So in summary, what we did was to took a microstructure that we have for a particular material, in this case, a steel microstructure, a steel material, and we measure manually the grain size. You know, We measure more, uh, approximately 100 grains, in this case, or 100 features, and we were able to build a histogram of the distribution of these grains so we can uh, basically um, kind of uh, have an idea of what is the average grain size. In this case, according to this log normal distribution, uh, the average population is approximately at 20 microns. Uh, remember that this is just an alternative method just to check, uh, but it's not a standard method. If you want to use a standard method, you need to use the AESTM standard, which basically um, uh, teach you how to do this in properly for measuring the average grain size. So this is just a complementary method if you want to uh, use it. Uh, so you can find the, this code um, in the description and let me know if you have any question. Thank you.